Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how to make some luminaries today. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with four pieces of cardstock cut at five and a half by four and a half. I know I'm throwing out some different dimensions on you today. And you're going to score it at half inch on two sides, the one of the long sides and one of the short sides. You're going to do that for all four. You're also going to need a four inch square and a three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths square. And then I just made a little template. This is uh, four inches by five inches because you want to put it inside the um, inside the score lines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these papers together, line it up to the score lines. Come on, go down. And then I've already found the center point and I'm just going to poke it through. Once it's poked through, ugh, push all of them through. Okay, now that center point is found, I'm going to break out my Cricut and I'm going to cut on elegant edges and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Okay, I have everything set up on my mat. I've got it in four spots. The center point I have on my Cricut, I don't think you can see that, but I have the center point on and it's all set and adjusted where I need it. So once it's done cutting that one, I'll just slide it down to this one and then over to this one and then back to that one and it'll all be in the center so I won't have to worry about that. But we're going on um, Elegant Edges, page 38. I'm gonna cut this oblong right here. Let me see if you can get that. That oblong right there, the little gray one. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, all that's done, and this is what you are left with. Now it looks kind of off because you have the half inch, have the half inch over here and the half inch there, but don't worry about that. I'm going to show you what what to do. Um, me, in the meantime, I also cut four pieces of vellum at two and three quarters by four and a half, and then I cut out my four pieces from my four little. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if you can see that. I can't see it on the screen. Cut four um, little gingerbreads from the From My Kitchen cartridge. And that is on page 43, nope, excuse me, page 42. And on the tabs, it's this little itty bitty guy right there. I don't even know if you can see that. Is it blurry? Probably. Sorry, my camera chick is still in bed this morning. <laughs> I'm trying to do this without her. Um, but yeah, I cut the gingerbread right there on the little tabs button and he's really tiny so you have to do it at real dial size. I cut the inside of these out at three and I believe it was three and a half. It was either three and a half or three and three quarters. Either one will work for you. And let's see, and that guy was cut real dial size at two inches. Yeah, two inches. And I'm gonna show you what I'm about to do now. I'm taking my cuddle bug big old cumbersome thing and my two B plates. My B plates are looking rough but that's because I have kids and they like to touch stuff even though mommy says no. What I'm doing is I'm actually going to sandwich them on first. This is a Tim Holtz alterations die. This is the brackets die and I'm doing it. There's one like top note looking one and then there's one like a whole bunch of little itty bitty top notes stuck together. I'm doing the little itty bitty top notes and I'm lining them up and I'm just gonna whoop, slide it in there please don't slide sliding it there where I want it to be and I'm holding it down now it's a little slightly tight but it goes through you know very easily so you can use your Sizzix dies your uh, Tim Holtz dies and stuff inside your cuddle bug. Okay, there we go. That that's what it gave me. Move that out of the way. And then I will begin assembly. ATG gun way over here. Now I'm going around the edges here as opposed to doing it on the vellum, just because I don't want. If I get it off on the vellum, I don't want it to show. Ooh, I cut that one tight. That one was real close. It's okay. It'll do the same thing. Now, if you get glue bugs, it's okay. Just do that up like that. 
and this just fits. Turn it sideways because I'm right handed and this is just a little bit easier for me to see. There we go. Now just to let you know that is very close to the edge so maybe three and a half would have been better to cut. Well it doesn't matter, you can, just, you can always cut the vellum a little bit bigger. But let me assemble these and once I get them done I will come back and show you one more time. Okay, got them all assembled. What I'm doing is I'm cutting the corners off of the, the scored sides. Try that again. The corner up at the top and that corner in there just to kind of give it a little bit of angle here. I've already put tacky glue on this strip, this little flap. What I'm doing is I'm just lining up the edge and gluing it down. Fold up the bottom part. Fold in the side part. Put a little bit more tacky glue on this side. Just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. And then bring this all the way over and line up your edge. You want to be sure you're not only lined up on this way, but you're also lined up with the, um, the bottom score. Okay. Once that's done, you just fold your flaps in. Could not be easier. I run tacky glue along the edge. I like tacky glue for this, just or you know the um, the Scotch Quick Dry, just because it seems to be a little bit easier. You can you can still adjust it. You don't you're not locked in. Now I want the four inch square. You're not locked into wherever you place it down. It's absolutely you know completely permanent. You can slide it around slightly like I'm doing. You want the four inch square and you want to get it as even as you possibly can. Flip it over. Take your bone folder. Can you see that? Take your bone folder and just go in along the edges right there. Perfect. Now on this one, this is your three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. You don't need a whole lot in this one either. Just kind of smoosh it around with your fingers like you did when you were kids when you put glue on your hands and then peeled it off. Yeah, I just got some of you with that. We all did that as a kid. And then you just put that inside as a liner and what that'll do is that'll just give you a little bit of extra stability. And then do the same thing. Just kind of run your bone folder over the back of it. Uh, get the glue off my hands. You're going to take your tea light, stick it inside. Whoop! Sorry about that, guys. Like I said, my camera chick isn't here and I'm working all by myself. Now, give me one second and I'll show you what that looks like glowing. And that is our little luminary completely glowing. See? How easy was that? And you can line, you can take these. Put a little bit of uh, sand down the bottom of them. I would recommend that you do that at the site that you have them. And line your driveway, line your sidewalk, put them on your balcony, whatever you you know, whatever you have. You can put these in windows. And it's just I got battery operated lights from the dollar store, three to a pack, and there you go. That's that's the luminary. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial.